First of all, I just want to th say good evening and thank all of you guys for coming out here and helping us to introduce and, and welcome uh, these three young men to the New, or New Orleans Pelicans organization. Uh, Nikhil Alexander Walker, Jackson Hayes, and Didi Silva have been chomping at the bit to get on the court the last week. And obviously through uh, the moratorium and things we had to work out with the trade, um, they've been incredibly patient through this process. And, and uh, just as a whole organization, we'd like to thank you guys through this process. But we're incredibly excited to have you guys as a part, as finally be a, officially part of the New Orleans Pelicans organization. I know you guys are ready to get on the court tonight and put on those Pelicans uniforms. And on behalf of the whole organization, we're looking forward to it as well. Um, so uh, these three guys are high character young men um, who are high level competitors as well and uh, are selfless in their approach to the game. And that's what we're looking for with our players going into the future with this organization. And so we think they'll be tremendous fits, both as uh, young men on and off the court. And we're excited to be part of their development uh, as basketball players from here going into the future. So, um, you know, if, if you, any of you guys got a chance to watch University of Texas like we did, um, you got to see Jackson's development through this, through this year. And I think with Coach Gentry and his staff style of play, He's going to fit in very well, being able to change into the floors um, very quickly, as I think as quick as any big in the league can do already. But his ability to impact the game on both ends of the floor, around the rim, putting pressure on defenses, uh, and also protecting the rim on the other end is going to be uh, is very intriguing. It's going to be a great fit for us. Nikhil Alexander Walker, he probably has no idea how much I've watched him over the past two years, but have really enjoyed uh, his his uh, defensive presence on the floor and his ability to do that night in and night out. Um, I have a tremendous amount of respect for his consistency in doing that. And in a tough uh, ACC conference where he's going against uh, very good players, he's the one that's chosen to uh, actually pick up and defend the best uh, perimeter player for his opponent night in and night out. And that's something that we were really intrigued by and his ability at the other end, his versatility on offense to stick shots, whether it's coming off actions or spotting up. And I think this past year when, his, uh, when Justin Robinson, their point guard, went down, he was able to fill in seamlessly and play some point guard, getting guys uh, opportunities to score, uh, whether it's pick and roll player in transition. So he's a guy that was really intriguing for us in the draft process. And uh, Didi Silva, who we were able to draft with our 35th pick, we're very excited about. We have to give a lot of credit to our international scouting group who identified him early this past season. We were able to track him live and also with uh, some video scouts. And even more so, later in the year, we were able, at the Hoop Summit in April, we were allowed to see him live every day for three or four days in practices and ultimately in the Hoop Summit game and see his approach uh, every day and getting some background on him and his character. We just thought he was a great fit for our organization going forward. So guys, welcome to the organization. Extremely excited to have you. Again, thanks for your patience. And, uh, you know, without any further ado, we'd like to uh, open up the floor for questions for these three young men. So thanks again. Oh, I'm sorry. Rod Walker with the uh, New Orleans Advocate. Um, just how tough was it having to not play, you know, sitting on the baseline the other night and not being able to play? Um, as a competitor, it's extremely hard. Uh, you you want to go out there and compete, especially um, in this you dream about playing in the summer league, and uh, as kids, always watch the summer league and wanted to get out there. So having to sit back and watch was kind of hard, but um, you, chill, you still try to enjoy the moment and embrace everything that you can. It's still a dream, and um, I'm just excited that I finally get to play now. Same question for you. Oh, same question. Uh, yeah, just as a competitor, it really stinks just having to sit down and watch your guys play. Uh, I mean, everybody wants to play, and I haven't played in quite a little bit of time. So, I mean, I've been itching at the bit to get back out there and play, so I'm really excited for tonight. Bom, é, foi difícil esses seis dias aí só treinando e sem, jo sem jogar. É uma ansiedade muito grande que, que nós jogadores temos para jogar, então, de qualquer jeito, a gente quer mostrar o nosso trabalho dentro da quadra. Então sempre vai ser difícil esse e, e também tem que ter muita paciência para quando chegar o dia também ficar tranquilo. Uh, he was saying uh, it was difficult. He was anxious to uh, come uh, to show his uh, work on the court, but he was patient. 
patient and now he's uh, ready to play. Shemit Dua with the Bourbon Street Shots. Trajan, this is a question for you. When you guys traded the number four pick for multiple picks, uh, what was your philosophy behind that? And was that an area where you saw an opportunity for surplus value? Uh, I, th I, th <clears throat> I think uh, Atlanta approached us with a good deal. And I think these guys were targets of ours in the, in the draft process. And we felt with picks in that range, we, we could really get to those guys. And, um, you know, we were fortunate that it worked out in that capacity because they were guys not only from a basketball standpoint, from, but from character and personality we thought would be great fits for the Pelicans organization moving forward. Uh, and we felt having, you know, three guys like this as opposed to obviously a very good player at number four, um, just we, we thought we were very intrigued by that proposition um, and we're very happy with how it turned out. Ali Cosell with the Bird Rights. I know you guys have been, you know, Pelicans, I guess, for less than 48 hours, but have you had a chance to, like, sit down with any members of the coaching staff, maybe go over some strategies that, you know, you hope to employ in tonight's game, and have any of the Pelicans players reached out to you guys individually yet? Uh, yeah, we've all met with all the coaches. We all know all the coaches. Uh, we were working out uh, on the side. They were teaching us stuff while we were, playing, or while we were working out. Uh, and then a lot of the older guys that you saw at the first game versus the Knicks, all of them reached out to us. We've talked to them, and uh, yeah. Um, Josh Hart reached out to us in a group text. Uh, got to sit and watch the game with uh, Drew Holiday. Um, so I would say they're like really opening. Um, everyone on the team, from the summer league team to some of the vets that just came in, have uh, accepted us with open arms so far. Um, the relationship with the coaches is the same as well. Um, it's an organization where you are happy to be in because everyone's so um, inviting. Uh, you don't feel like uh, it's more of a business, like you can enjoy the process and enjoy everything going on. É mesmo a gente treinando só nós três é, sozinhos. A gente teve contato sim com, com a equipe, com o coach. Então a gente está tá bem ligado no que tem que fazer. Também a gente sabe todas as jogadas, então agora hoje a noite é brotar, botar em prática para mostrar o nosso jogo para a NBA e também para os coaches. Oh, he said even practicing uh, separately do, uh, from the team, he they had contact with the coaching staff at the hotel and uh, and when in the uh, individual practices working about specific. Um, tactics for, for the Pelicans, so they are ready for tonight's game. And Jackson, uh, this is Will from The Athletic. Jackson, I, I wonder if you can kind of just describe what this journey has been like for you over these past few years, kind of going from not even on the radar, you know, late in your high school career to now being a lottery pick in the NBA, I guess, what has that been like, that journey? Uh, I mean, it's been really exciting, uh, just seeing my progression throughout the years. Uh, just going from my junior year, I was hardly playing. And then my senior year, All-State, uh, came in as a freshman at Texas thinking I might have got redshirted, was, or think I was going to get redshirted. And then going to start the second half of the year and become a lottery pick, it's just been really exciting and really fun. So, yeah. Akil, this is a question for you. You have a cousin in the NBA. What kind of advice has he been able to impart on you on, as your journey is beginning? Um, just kind of enjoying the process, everything that he's learned and been through through his first year, um, just kind of telling me the do's and the don'ts, uh, embracing who I am as a player and uh, accepting that. Uh, it's, it's big on confidence in the league and just making sure that I'm confident and always willing and able to, to work harder than the next guy. Uh, Trajan, uh, I wonder with additions of Nikhil, Didi, along with Lonzo and some of the other guys, it seems like you guys have put a, a big premium on getting bigger on the perimeter, getting longer guys. Do you think that's something you guys really focused on this offseason? I, th I definitely think it helps from a versatility standpoint in terms of guarding multiple positions. And um, it gives Coach Gentry and his staff a lot of versatility and options in terms of different lineups to put out on the floor. And I think as a as a front office, that's, a, that's what you want to give your, your coaching staff, not only – high character competitive guys, but um, guys that have skill level and you can put on the court in, in different positions and different combinations to match up to other teams at any point. So I think we're happy with what we've done um, from a trade, free agency, and a draft standpoint to put us in a position to uh, be competitive and move forward. 
This is uh, Jim Eichenhofer from Pelicans.com. For the three players, what are you guys going to work on during summer league, and what are you going to through the off season to? What are some of the things you want to focus on to get ready for the fall when you guys are go to training camp? Uh, one of the things I'm just mainly going to work on is getting back into the rhythm of a game. Uh, I haven't played a game since last March, so just kind of getting that flow back. Uh, it's really the main thing that I'm going to be working on. Conditioning. Uh, it's a faster game. You want to be in shape, be able to run, um, play up and down at a, at a good pace. Uh, as far as just getting with a coach and trying to understand the game more, um, at the end of the day, it's still basketball, which I've been doing my entire life. And uh, just continuing to work on the things that I need to work on, but at the same time, getting with a coach that I'm understanding the game so I can play and know what I'm doing and not just be out there. É, nessa minha liga eu quero melhorar no meu jogo é, o passe, um pouco também de visão de jogo que, que eu preciso ter e melhorar ainda no rebote, e, é, melhorar também os dribles, que, que os meus dribles não são muito bons, mas também no futuro é, aprimorar mais o meu jogo, então eu pretendo fazer isso nessa Summer League e, e mostrar o meu jogo. Um... He's saying that in the summer league he wants to, he thinks he needs to work on his uh, readings and passing, uh, which is uh, something that uh, is not um, to his satisfaction yet. And in the future he's, he's not uh, too concerned, he just wants to work on rebounding and, and doing more uh, fundamental stuff for normal basketball stuff. Malika Andrews, ESPN. I know you guys spoke about not being able to play in those first couple of games, but Summer League, as much as winning is nice, isn't necessarily always the outcome. I'm curious for you, especially considering those first couple of games you missed, what would you consider to be a successful Summer League? What, what comes out of that? Uh, successful Summer League is winning the championship of the Summer League. Uh, I mean, that's always what you want to kind of say success is, is winning it all. You, you're the champion, so i probably say that's success for us. I mean, no, we're not, not successful, but, like, I mean, if we grow as a team and figure out how our chemistry is, I mean, that'll also be successful, but the goal is always to win a championship. Kind of touch on what you're saying. It's just uh, you always want to win. I mean, everyone plays at this level to win. Everyone knows that if you want to be great, you got to win. And so, um, but it's not the end all be all. We know it's, uh, there's a bigger picture to it and uh, that summer league is a great way to kind of get intro introduced into the NBA and uh, prepare ourselves for what's ahead. Um, I think that if we win every game and we learn how to play together, that's a win. But if we lose every game, but still learn that um, we're growing and going in the right direction, I think, uh, Eventually, it'll start to crescendo the right way. É, temos muito que melhorar ainda, mas para a gente ganhar essa Summer League, a gente tem que manter a competitividade que nosso time tem e continuar unido e apoiando um outro, confiando, porque assim a gente vai longe, vai melhorar o nosso nosso jogo e é, chegar nas finais da Summer League. He thinks he still has a lot of uh, work, but if we stay competitive and work with each other and uh, play uh, together, we can make it to the finals. Uh, this is a question for, for Didi. Um, what are you looking forward to most with your opportunity in Australia? Bom, é uma oportunidade muito boa que eu estou tendo é, de jogar no Sydney Kings. Tenho certeza que vai ser um grande passo na minha carreira. Então, pre pretendo aprimorar o meu basquete lá, aprimorar a língua inglesa também, que eu já venho praticando, para ano que vem eu, que eu possa voltar para a NBA e ajudar o Pelicans. He's very happy about the, this opportunity. He thinks he will be able to work on his game a lot and learn English and hopefully be back in the NBA next year. Uh, Trajan, sticking with Didi, 
how do you kind of lay out goals for him and make sure he's developing the way you want to when he won't necessarily be with the team and be around where you can kind of reach out to him the way you really want to? That's a really good question. Um, we're, so, we're incredibly excited uh, to put him in a situation in Australia with people that we know. Um, and uh, we're going to be able to track his progression. We'll have, definitely have a plan that we lay out for, his, um, for him to get better through the year. Uh, and we'll do that with the team that he's with, uh, with the organization, with the coaching staff. And we'll have a chance to track that. We'll take, obviously, several trips down there to not only visit but scout him. And we'll watch every game of his. We'll keep in touch with him, whether it's through email or text or Skype. But we'll be in constant contact with coaching staff and, and the organization that he's with. So, um, you know, he needs to, obviously, aside from the basketball part, uh, the body development part will be huge for him as well. And uh, he's already a really good athlete with a great frame. And I think you'll see a, a different Didi uh, 365 days from now. So we're excited to have him go down there. And, and um, you know, he's going to be, uh, it's going to be huge for his development going forward. Traden, suddenly with the uh, addition of three players, how's that going to affect the roster for the remaining games? Are, is everybody going to play that's up here on, on the uh, uh, up here on the panel uh, together, or are there going to be some guys that maybe sit one game, play another game? How's it going to affect you know the roster for the rest of the league, well, the summer league? These three guys have already sat two games, so they're going to play. Um, I, there's no way we can keep them off the court right now. They've been chomping at the bit for a while, so uh, it, it'll affect minutes for guys that have already played the first two games, but these guys have been working their tails off and, and getting ready, so they deserve some minutes, and, and we're excited to see them play. I'm just curious how, how the language barrier works on the floor. Is it something that you have to take extra time or, or draw up plays differently? Or, or how does that, that work when communicating with all of you? Or how do you anticipate that working? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I, I played internationally for nine years um, with, with players from all around different countries, um, different backgrounds on one team. And um, you know, if you're a competitor, and your basketball IQ is good enough, you're going to figure out the way it's played. Didi's been playing basketball for a long time. Uh, the game's played the same here as it is in Brazil. Um, he's going to figure it out. Uh, he's a high-level competitor. He wants to learn. He's highly coachable. And his English is better than you think it is. So I think he'll pick up things really, really quickly. Um, and I look forward to seeing him get out there and compete with his teammates. Nikhil, Nikhil uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you're the only guy on the stage that's actually play, played against Zion in a real game. So I guess, can you describe what that was like and how excited are you to actually be on the same team with him now? Um, it's, it, it's a load you got to really focus in on. Um, he draws so much attention with his ability uh, and the, the pressure that he applies on the defense because he's constantly in the paint, constantly um, – doing something active as to where you have to kind of plan for and pre prepare for. So I think uh, playing with him now and knowing um, all the work that had to go into it uh, will, will be a lot easier for me and uh, the rest of the team. And when you kind of know someone's strengths and weaknesses from scouting, uh, it kind of helps you to know how I got to get him the ball or how I can play with him. Um, so it kind of plays to my advantage in a sense. 